policy just sort of they go hey uh, so national geographic is doing the show about special forces and uh they managed to talk to whomever and they basically agreed like the army agreed that we should let them go to a fire base and like you know capture real world how the guys do things and uh and everybody looked at each other like this is not the place like there's a lot of fire bases and this is probably not the place you want to go right but somebody thought it was a good idea so uh they went out there so they came in and they landed and uh i mean it was one of those like hey how you doing i'm such and such and i can't guarantee your safety it was like the first thing off the <laughs> yeah. gate. so we went out so we took them out one day and, and we you know we we thought long and hard about it and the team leader kind of rolled me in and he goes hey man um you know how how do we go about doing this um and then we all kind of agreed that hey let's just kind of do like a med cap or something so they can get their footage so we did like a day med cap thing and then we came back and then um then we decided then they we went out again and it was around the same place of Yakdan, that same place with the big tick and uh we were driving through um the side of a, of a mountain mm -hmm. and um so we had like some of the Kandak guys kind of walk in front of us um with uh with some mine sweepers some mine detectors that half of them didn't even have batteries they only found out <laughs> so they're going and they go hey we found a we found a, a mine so we stopped and uh we took out some c4 and we went and blew it up but when that explosion happened in it on earth another two in front but it also on earth two behind us oh my god in other words we're on the side of a mountain and we were essentially on a mine road and there's no way of getting out because it's, you know, it's a road and basically you just fall off. The cliff, yeah. And we were already getting information that they knew where we were at and the team was split into, you know, some guys were on this side of the, the river, some guys were on that side. So, so we, we were stuck. So, you know, so they started keep clearing things and, and like the communicate, like you could tell that they were getting ready for like calling people up. Hey, yeah bring such and such guy from whatever you're talking about the enemy right you're gonna you're, yeah. You're, oh yeah 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 so i was like so i got on the radio I go hey i need to know what's on the air right now to all of this everybody in, in the mind of everybody I, I it was in the back of mine but i realized in hindsight that it was in the back of everybody else's just that uh there's a lot of things that you need to do in those situations and the last thing you want to think about is you have a few civilians that are recording the whole thing yeah. so you're man how am i how am i going to play this out so we keep clearing and uh, i think at the time uh they say hey we don't have any cast available but you know just kind of keep us both so we clear enough where i kind of pulled off and we we had clear enough of a route to a piece of high ground and i parked and me and at this time jerry had transitioned out and then and another jtac had come in from 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 another sts it was a new guy so we had you know they those guys had transitioned out and uh so he kind of told him, I go, Hey, so like, let's do this. Like I'll control till midnight and you control after that. And so, so that was around the same time that all this stuff was going on. So, so we had, I just got to the piece of high ground and I got off the, the Mark 47, the gun, the, the, the cruiser weapon. And I got back to my rucksack to like turn off the radio mm. and, uh, the vehicle that literally pulled in next to mine was the one that hit the IED. Oh my God. So I did the, I can, I can say this not laughing, but you know, the, you know, the, uh, the, the Charlie Murphy story where, uh, where Rick James kick him in the chest and he flies like 10 feet. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I remember it being like that. Like you, you oh felt like he feel like, I'm, I'm like, whoa. And I hit this, uh, this, this big boulder and literally my, I hit so hard that my back plate like cracked. Oh my God. So I'm in the ground. And the only thing I can think about, because I felt, you know, you felt that intense heat. I mean, yeah. literally, I was not 10 feet away. I mean, I was probably like five feet from the IED. So I, like, I, I was scared to look at myself. Yeah. And I, I remember seeing the smoke, like the, the heat coming out. And all I kept thinking about was DT. And, uh, and I remember, then I looked, the only thing I was, I dared to do is like, look at my hands. And then my, uh, in my in this hand i don't know if you see the finger but yeah i had like a like a silver dollar size of like uh, shrapnel oh and uh so i'm there so i'm like shit. like i hadn't i didn't know where to move or and i kept hearing rounds sipping past you know and uh so here's where some of the the some of the stuff with 
people that have traumatic brain injury kind of plays in for those who don't know. Um, everything that I'm going to relate after this is how I remember it. And time later, much later, that the team actually got back and they told me and I mean, literally, it's like me talking to you. I was talking to JD and they go, no, man, that was Brandy. You were talking to Brandy the whole time. But I remember it like I'm re like right now. Huh. So all I kept doing was asking for my gun. Like, Where's my rifle? Where's my rifle? They're like, they're like just come, come. Yeah. So <laughs> they, um, they dragged me and they, they had set up like a little CCP. So I went over there and uh, on the guys that were on that truck, um, one of them, died almost immediately out of overpressure. And um, for those who don't know, essentially what overpressure, what an overpressure death is, is basically your body is, looks normal, except literally you're like rubber. Mm. Like it crushes your bones, essentially. So I'm sitting there and uh, and the guy who was the medic, good friend of mine, Rob, he goes, hey man, and like, like hold the eye, like cause I had to stay, they wanted me to stay uh, awake. Sure. And I'm like, yeah, so I'm holding an IV bag and I'm like, like, oh, you think he's going to be all right? And he goes, yeah, yeah, he'll be all right. And I said, cool. And then they brought some other guys that were injured and some of the National Geographic guys were injured. So then eventually a helicopter landed and um, they picked some of us up and um, and we flew back to TK. And uh, when I was told what happened, he goes, yeah, you were on the ground. You went over like that. We took it to the CCP. You did do the thing with the bag. You were feeding an IV bag to, uh, to somebody who had expired but they needed to keep you alive. Then you stood up when this, when the helicopter was gonna come in and you walked on your own down to the helicopter and along the way, I don't remember any of this. Along the way, you kind of said, you, you, very casually, you, you say, hey man, check it out, man. There's an ID right there. Like they had, literally people, people had dri driven past it and had not set it off, but I saw it and it was very casual. So I made it up to the helicopter and I told, uh, apparently before I got into the helicopter, I told the guy, he goes, Hey man, um, I'll be back in a couple of days. I, my wa I left my wallet, uh, in the, in, in the, in my room. So just make sure you lock it. Like I was having this, I don't remember any of this. Oh my God. Then we got into the helicopter and, um, on the way up, like, you know, the national geographic guys were there with me and, uh, apparently, uh, and I sort of kind of remember this, but not quite exactly. When the helicopter was taking off, um, I saw an RPG through the window and the helicopter kind of like did this. And he goes, oh my God, what's that? And I said, oh man, that's just an RPG. Don't worry about it. Like it was very like nonchalant. I, oh my God. But I was, I'm, I'm, I was, I was checked out. You know, yeah. I was, like I was, I don't, yeah. So I, you know, so they took me to TK and they started taking out a lot of shrapnel. I had shrapnel on my face, on my arm. Oh. Um, I messed up my back a little bit, but I can still walk. And, um. And then I blew out, then my, my pelter had bent up and like I was bleeding through my, you know, through, through my ear. But you know, all in all, um, I was, I was walking wounded, right? So uh, they go, you, and I was going to leave uh, the following week, by the way. This, all these things that horrible things that happen in that place is always so people are living with, that are going to leave within a month. Jeez. So, uh, so I got back, you know, and I'm like, you know, you know, they pick me up and I remember way before that I had spoken to Mark Hurst and I remember him saying that, man, when I got hurt, like, uh, you know, you kind of think of your family, this, but the thing that I, that I, he was worried the most is that, Oh my God, I'm going to lose my spot on, on the Rangers. And I remember at the time, you know, that was, that was my life. You know, that was, I was petrified of like, so I'm like, Hey, I got to like turn this around and like get fit quickly and whatever. And, uh, I, I rushed a lot of things, um, physically, like, you know, they did, you know, therapy with my hand and whatnot. And so I was able to like do my thing and I was, I got back on jump status. And so I, I deployed again, but they said, Hey, why don't you this time around, you just go to see yourself. 